So we'll have to look into that for our next webinar. That's awesome that a lot of people. Yeah. All right, so back to citizen science projects. Um, like I said, you can, you can do a little, you can do a lot. A lot of them right now are online. Um, they can involve one person or millions of people collaborating towards a common goal. Um, typically, the public is involved in data collection, analysis, and reporting. Right now, we're doing a lot with uh, SciStarter.org. It's an online community dedicated to improving the citizen science experiments uh, for projects, managers, and the participants. So over 3,000 projects and events are searchable by location, um, scientific topic, and age level. Um, it is not the only website that connects you to citizen science projects. In fact, the project that we'll be doing today actually originates on a site called Zooniverse, which is another site for citizen science projects. They just don't house as many um, projects as SciStarter.org. Our featured project for Earth Day is all about galaxies. Uh, we're going to show you how you can help real scientists characterize and classify different galaxies that they have taken pictures of. But first, let's learn a little bit about galaxies. A galaxy is a huge collection of gas, dust, and billions of stars and, uh, in our solar system, and their, and their solar system, sorry. A galaxy is held together by lots and lots of gravity. That's what holds it together. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. Also has, uh, our, our galaxy and a lot of other galaxies have um, black holes in the middle. Ours in particular has a super massive black hole. There are many galaxies besides ours um, and there are so many that we can't even count them all. The Hubble Space Telescope looked at a small patch of space for about 12 days and found 10,000 galaxies of all sizes and shapes and colors. Some scientists think that there could be as many as 100 billion galaxies in the universe. That is a whole lot. This is actually a picture taken by the Hubble Space Telescope um, showing thousands of galaxies. Even the tiny dots are whole galaxies, and uh, this just proves that the universe is a very big place. How are we doing with sound? Am I breaking up? Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Are all good. Sweet. <clears throat> all right. So galaxies can come in different shapes. Um, our galaxy is considered a spiral galaxy. Um, they have curved arms that make them look kind of like a pinwheel. And we'll get back to the pinwheel shape in a minute because there's actually a really cool um, activity that you can do at home to make your own pinwheel galaxy. Other galaxies are smooth and oval shaped and they're called elliptical galaxies. And there are also galaxies that aren't spiral or oval and they have irregular shapes that look kind of like blobs. Um, the light that you see in each of these galaxies comes from the stars inside of it. So as we have our own stars and constellations, so do other galaxies, which is pretty neat. Sometimes galaxies get too close and they can smash into each other or merge together to make uh, a larger galaxy. Our Milky Way galaxy will someday bump into Andromeda or our closest uh, galactic neighbor. Galaxies are so big, however, and spread out at the ends that even though galaxies bump into each other, the planets in the solar systems often don't get too close um, or, or collide or anything like that. So I wanted to show you a site where I got most of this information from. Um, it is accessible to everybody. It is called spaceplace.nasa.gov. So if I pull up this. This is the website that I was talking about. It's called Space Place. It has a lot of cool information about Earth, the sun, the solar system, the universe, and they also have cool little crafts that you can do. So while I was learning wow. about galaxies and the universe and all that stuff, it kept popping up that I should make my own pinwheel galaxy. Um, so it shows here all of the step-by-steps. It also has a little bit of information about one of the um, closest galaxies that's actually a part of Ursa Major or um, the Big Bear. So it gives you information on uh, the things that you'll need. There's a little print off PDF, pipe cleaner, popsicle sticks, and then it goes step by step on how to construct. Super easy, only really takes a few minutes. You don't need glue or tape or anything. And then you can have your own pinwheel galaxy which is pretty neat. 
So we're gonna get back to the presentation. All right, Do you want to go to the app? I'm sorry? <laughs> well, boys and girls, please make sure that you've turned off the audio just so we can get any feedback on our end. If you wanna ask a question, please use the chat box. Uh, and if your video is on, just know that you are being recorded now, otherwise you can turn the video off. So All right, let me go up to join our 238306 in the Mario costume. If you could please turn off your audio when you have a second. Thank you. All right, I just muted everybody again. Awesome. So Ms. Sloan, if you would like to unmute yourself. Okay, cool. All right, now that we've learned a little bit about galaxies, let's move on to our project. Uh, for more than 10 years, Galaxy Zoo has asked volunteers to help them explore galaxies near and far, sampling a fraction of the roughly 100 billion galaxies that are scattered throughout the observable universe. Um, so that being said, right now, we don't really have the, the power to see everything, um, but every 10 years or so, we're amping up that technology and we're being able to see more and more. Each one of the systems containing billions of stars has a unique life interacting with its surroundings and with other galaxies in, the, in different ways. The aim of the Galaxy Zoo team is to try and understand these processes and to work out what, what galaxies can tell us about the past, present, and the future of the universe as a whole. Um, so that's kind of the main basis of the project. I think it's really important for us to know why we participate in these projects and uh, what kind of good it's doing for the community. The latest galaxy images come from the Dark Energy Camera Legacy Survey, which is called DECALS, and it's located in Chile. Uh, because it uses a larger telescope, DECALS is 10 times more sensitive to light than the survey that supplied images to the first iteration of the Galaxy Zoo, which was called the Sloan Digital Sky Survey, which is located in New Mexico. <laughs> Ms. Sloan, did you know that they named something after you? I did not know that I thought, the, I, I didn't know that I was that important, but it was good to know. Yeah, good to know. Um, that means that the pictures that we're seeing now are uh, have a lot more detail, which makes our jobs a lot easier. So we are going to switch from this presentation and just go straight to the website that has all this information. So there's a couple of ways that you can get to this project. You can go to sidestarter.org, like I uh, told you before. SciStarter.org is very easy to use. You don't have to have an account or anything. You can actually go over here and just click. If you want online only, you can say Galaxy Zoo. And I will say I've looked for a couple of different projects on there. When um, all the restrictions are lifted, they have projects where you get together. Um, maybe out in a park somewhere and help scientists, or you can work on things like this one where you're doing it entirely from home, which could be great if you have any science fair projects you need to work on in the future, or any volunteer hours that you need to get done. Yes, these are great. Um, right now, they're really focusing on online stuff, obviously, um, for everybody's protection, but they have all sorts of activities. Uh, like I said, SciStarter has up upwards of 3,000 projects on it, and they're constantly adding things and taking things off as projects are finished or starting up. Um, another way that you can find Galaxy Zoo is by going to zooniverse.org and then typing in their projects. So this is what the website looks like when you first start the project. Um, it has a lot more information about what their project's about, a little bit about scientists and things like that. Then if you just want to get to the, to the actual activity, you have two options. You can go to the classic or the enhanced. And right here it says that if you choose enhanced, you can see the galaxies that we most need your help with. Um, so that means, and I've looked into this, they actually have a computer that is analyzing some of the photos and they're able to um, kind of classify those, those images themselves. But sometimes those computers aren't as precise as, as human eyes. So they've put up those photos for people to help classify. And what's really important to remember is even though you're looking at these photos and you're classifying them, so are like three to four to five other people. So even if you think you might be making a mistake, just use your best judgment and answer the questions as best as you can. And you won't be the only one classifying the, the pictures. So no pressure. So if you go to the enhanced, which always has better photos, 
you'll see that there is a tutorial that pops up and it'll tell you a little bit about the projects, how you're going to answer all the questions. Um, so don't worry if you don't understand. There's also this really neat little tab over here called the field guide. I use that a lot <laughs> when doing this project because I find that I'm always um, contradicting myself or asking a bunch of questions. So if you don't know what it means to be smooth, you'll come over here to the field guide and it'll break it down even more for you to understand. What does it mean? Here are some examples of actual photos that they've taken where people have correctly identified the galaxy as being smooth. So I highly recommend using that field guide. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was doing something similar to this and it was classifying photographs that were taken in the African uh, savanna. They were trying to identify different types of elephants, whether it's a specific subspecies, male, female, juvenile. And it, for them, it was the shape of the ears. And I had a little guide <laughs> that would pop up and you could check it every That's once so in a while. Cute. Yeah, it was because I'm not an elephant expert and Miss Marquis is not a galaxy expert. But I'm they shook. Do have that, they do have that information that can help you. So don't <laughs> feel if you pick one of these um, projects to work on, don't feel like um, you can't do it if you're not 100% sure. They're, it's, they're just looking for everyone's input. Yes, and I think that's what's really fun about this. Okay, so now is where I want your guys' input. So is the galaxy simply smooth and rounded with no sign of a disc? So a disc is something that you can visually see. So we can come over here and say what exactly is a disc so that I can give you guys answers. So you guys can go in the chat box and decide for yourselves. So go ahead and vote in the chat box. Do you think that it is smooth? Do you think that it is smooth with a disc? And was there a third option there, Ms. Marquita? Yes, then there is also one that is star or artifact. So there, if there is something so bright in the screen that you cannot see what the galaxy is, sometimes that means it was a star or something weird happened with the microscope that was taking the picture or the telescope, sorry then you would um, click the star or artifact, but only if you can't, can't identify the galaxy. All so right. I think we only have the two options, smooth or features with, with or a disc. So what so are the so options? So far, two people have guessed that it may be a disc and everyone else has voted that it is smooth. And that's why they have a lot of people look at a lot, three people have voted for this. That's why I have a lot of people look at these pictures and even scientists in a lab also have their work checked by another person because you want to get a consensus, an idea of what everyone feels. So we've got four people who think it is, uh, has a disc and everyone else has voted for smooth. Okay, so we're going to hit smooth since it's the majority. This one I find to be a little bit difficult because I always have to turn up the brightness on my computer, which you can do that. Or this really cool extra feature down here is you can turn you can invert the image. So it, sometimes it's easier to see the shape of it when there aren't other extra light sources happening. So do we think that it is completely round, in between meaning it's kind of squished like an egg, or cigar shaped meaning it's super thin? Let's do that inverted image again because that really helps. All right, so now we're voting on completely round, in mm -hmm. between, or cigar shaped. I think that is a little easier to see for me. It so is, and I switch it to the dark everyone theme. Everyone is in between, right? Okay. Now. All right. So we have one for cigar. Let's everyone go with. So far in, saying in between. In between. I feel like that's the most common shape. Yeah. All right. So if we hit the next, it's going to ask us some more questions. All right. Podium done. Let's is the galaxy merging or dis disturbed? So if you don't know what that means, that's totally fine. You can come over here and you can say, is the galaxy merging or disturbed? And it has all of this information. Is a galaxy colliding with another one? So do you see two galaxies in that picture? I don't see two Make galaxies. Make sure to turn your audio off, you guys. If you have your audio on, it's gonna give us a little feedback. I'm remuting everybody. All right, so I don't see the two galaxies. This is what the pictures would look like if it did have two galaxies. So they're not merging. One now when they see two galaxies, they might be referring to the other dot that's a little to the left. Yes, yeah, so I think that other dot might just be um, another cluster of the stars from that galaxy. So they're looking to see if two galaxies have, have already started to merge together. So they've already made yes. one. Yes. 
And then there's this um, way to explain that it's being disturbed in some way. Is the shape of the galaxy kind of weird and twisted? Does it look like um, it's being pulled to one way or the other? So here are some pictures of um, galaxies that have been majorly disturbed, meaning they looked kind of whooshy or minorly disturbed. We're getting a lot of votes for minor disturbed and a okay. lot for none. There's no disturbance. Okay. So let's do minor disturbed since that's what a lot of people, you said the majority were saying. A lot of people saying minor disturbed. Okay. I might say that as well because it looks like this area right over here sticks out farther than this area does. Can we do so an inverted on that one? Yes. So it does look a little bit to me and if this is part of the galaxy, which with the close proximity it probably is, that means part of it has um, been pulled over to that area. Well, now we've got uh, the majority of our folks are voting for none. We've got to go with the majority on this. All right, let's go majority, say none. Next. All right, do you see any of these rare features? Do you see a ring? A ring would be very obvious. I see a dog. Do you see a lens or an arc? So that happens there. Like I said, there is an explanation over here that shows you. I are getting most of the votes for none, that there are no rings, there's no extra feature on the outside. And I kind of have to agree with that. It looks pretty basic to me. Mm -hmm. So again, so scientists say, don't have time to comb through all of these pictures. That's why they need citizens to help with the science. So this we're helping them get closer to their goal of finishing their, uh, their research. So that was the conclusion of those questions since um, we were able to classify it as being pretty basic and nothing weird. So it gave us a brand new um, galaxy to identify. So a lot of times there are these smooth ones, but recently I've been getting a lot more with spiral arms um, or different mergings and things like that. So um, the longer that you're on, the more pictures that you'll see and the cooler things that you'll be able to, to witness through this. So we still have a little bit of time. Did you guys want to go through another photo? Yeah, let's do one more really quickly. So this is okay. going to be a, a lightning round on your voting for this one. Okay, so do we think it's smooth features or disks? So does it have whirly arms? Is it on its side? Does it look like there's more than one galaxy in it? Or is there a super bright star and we can't see it? So far, 100% of voting says smooth. Okay, let's hit smooth. Do we think that it is completely round, in between, or cigar shaped? Completely round, in between, or cigar shaped. We have completely round, completely round. It looks like 100% of voting is in for completely round. And we have one for cigar. All right. I would agree with cigar. I would agree with the 99% who said completely round. Yes, okay. I would also agree. Okay, do we think that there is any merging or disturbance happening? Major disturbance, minor disturbance, or merging. Anyone? Let's vote. So far, everyone is voting no disturbance. All right, that's probably what I would also vote. Do we think that there is a ring, a lens, irregularity? I don't think it's an irregular shape. Overlapping, meaning that there's another galaxy in the forefront um, or a dust lane. 100% of voting is in and they say no disturbance. Nothing, Nothing unusual. Nothing. All right, and then it gave us, it gave us another one. So like okay. I said, you can go through here. Um, you can go through the classic, you can go through the enhanced version of it. Um, and this is basically the entire project. You can go for as long as you want, you can make an account. I made an account so it kind of saves how many you've classified and how much you've helped. Um, so we'll go back to our presentation. So someone did point out those were two very typical easy ones but again those were just two random pictures they gave us. You could get all sorts of things. Uh, our last webinar we were looking at animal cams and you would get you know deer after deer after deer and then suddenly a turkey. So you never really know what the picture is going to be. They give them to you randomly. Yes, and yesterday I spent a whole lot of time trying to identify some really hard ones, so you never know. And like I said, if you're ever going to actually do this um, activity, 
use that field guide on the side. It does a really good job on giving you examples and um, answering any of those questions. Okay, one of the questions that was asked is how can we find out how the research went? Um, you can actually find that out. Um, if you go to their website, and you go back to Galaxy Zoo, the actual project, you can scroll down here and it actually gives you statistics. So fun fact, yesterday when I was on here, it said that it was 64% complete and now it's 14% complete, which tells me they've added more photos um, to this project since yesterday. And another thing is the enhanced version wasn't actually available to use because all those photos were gone. They had already been tested. So since yesterday, they have added more photos and more of them have been considered enhanced, meaning they're too hard for computers to identify. Um, so this project is an ongoing project. It will continue probably forever. So it's not something that you have to worry about um, it running out or anything like that, like some of our other projects have. So you can look at statistics this way. If you go over here, it and actually again, shows you, you. If you are looking to do any type of science fair project, these are a really good uh, jumping off point. It can give you a lot of information, a lot of um, data. If you're just interested in doing it on your own because you like galaxies or you like animals for the animal one, then you can just do it for fun. Yeah, that's what I do whenever I'm bored, is just identify animals and cute little pictures and things. But this shows you kind of the trend on um, how much participation has happened, um, how many uh, classifications happened just yesterday, how many volunteers have signed up, when it uh, actually launch date happened and things. So it does give you a lot of information I like about this website is it breaks down the research for you. So you, you can kind of see um, live statistics on the actual project. And as we have people who are living in the ISS um, from all the different space agencies and they're working on um, launching new or um, improving the telescopes that we have, we're just gonna keep getting more and more images um, fun fact for Earth Day, for those people who are not actually on Earth at the moment, uh, does anyone have a guess for how long the ISS has been orbiting around with people on it? So I'll give you 10 seconds to guess, because after that I think you're going to hit Google. How long has the ISS been floating around the Earth with people on it? Maybe days, maybe years, someone's guessed 10 years, got 10 years. I do not know this answer. <laughs> it has been 4,700 days. How many years is that? 15 years. Wow. So I think a, a lot of people in this uh, video are not that old. At any old. given time, there are people who are not actually on planet Earth, but they are helping us get the pictures for this webinar. Yes. Before we go, Ms. Marquita, did you want me to talk a little bit about Friday's uh, class? Yes, please do that. All right, so um, if you are interested in coming to our webinar same time on Friday, we are doing our junior naturalist webinar. Uh, it is not a citizen science project. I have owl pellets. I'm gonna dissect owl pellets and you guys are gonna help me identify the stuff we find inside the owl pellets. Um, and then I'm gonna show you guys how to identify some of the owls that you might have in your backyard and how to make an owl habitat if you're interested in getting an owl to come live in your backyard if you are um, in an area that has owls. And guess what? If you are from any of the states that you said you're from, you've got owls there. So there are owls all over the United States. So if you're interested, if you've dissected owl pellets before, awesome. You can help us identify some of the stuff because you already know what's gonna be in there, but I haven't practiced about it yet, so I don't know exactly what's gonna be in there. But that will be Friday at 10.30. So it'll be- 10.30 Central Time. 10.30 Central Time, a good, slightly disgusting time. And then um, <laughs> at uh, a week from Friday, our final Junior Naturalist webinar will have live snake feedings with the snakes who normally live at the SciTech Discovery Center. So if anyone wants to learn a little bit about our ball python and watch a live snake feeding, that will be a week from this Friday. And all of that is on our website. And you can find us on- uh, yes. SciTech Discovery Center, Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all of that. So this Friday is are the birds, and a week from Friday are the snakes. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, we are going to end the recording in a second. Hope you had fun.
and uh, have a good rest of your Earth Day. Bye. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to end recording. Yes?